Welcome back everyone to tutorial number four for our little mini multiplayer racer. So we're just going to jump right back into the scripting. So we'll start off with uh, the wheel. And I want a way to be able to turn the wheel. Now when I say turn the wheel, I mean as in steering, you know, going left and right in your car, not turning as in rotating the wheel. Uh, later on when we get into the visuals, uh, we'll be doing that in the move part. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new public void turn it's going to take a float and again we'll just call it value and inside of here we're going to grab the wheel collider but this time we're going to grab this steering angle and as we see it takes you know it has a getter and a setter so basically you assign a value to it and that value is how much you want to steer left or right so we'll grab steering angle and we'll just set it to equal the value I'll go ahead and save that off jump into our motor and we got to find a way to actually pass the value in. Now I'm going to be using uh, the horizontal axis so for me it's the A and D or the left and right mouse button. Whatever you set yours up. We talked about the input manager last video so we need a new variable name and this is going to be I guess the turning speed so let's just call it turn speed and we're going to be looking at the horizontal We'll go ahead and we'll save that off. Uh, we'll leave it for 20 for now. Uh, later on, we will be getting rid of these little magic numbers, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and leave them. And we're going to work it just like we did last time. I'm going to have my car steer with the front tires, but you could have your car steer with the back tires. Some do. And some actually have four wheel steering. So you could set that up as well. I just want the front wheel steering, but I will put in all four. So we'll say front wheel steering. And we'll do it just like we did before. Wheel, then the one we want to access. We call that function I made, and we just pass in the value. Pretty simple so far. Well, guys, we'll post that up there. There we go. So we have the front done. We'll go ahead and just copy that. Paste it down here. We'll call this rear wheel steering. And this goes off of three and four. And again, depending how many wheels you have set up in your car and how you want to set it up, you could have more than one wheel, more more than one section. The way I'm breaking it up here is I have have it basically in sections. Because I know later on down the road, if I have time, I would like to basically have that as an option on a car where you could have, you know, like front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive. But I'm not sure if I'll have enough time this month to get to it. So for now, I'll just comment it out. And a quick tip for those that are using Mono Develop here, uh, if you go ahead and highlight some lines and just hit either command slash or control slash depending on what operating system you're on it'll actually comment those out for you and likewise uncomment but i want to comment these out as because as i said i do want to have just front wheel steering so we have a way to steer make sure this is saved we actually have the method that steers the wheel uh, i've got it split into two sections Let's go ahead, look at our car from the top down. We'll select the whole car and zoom in a bit. I can't zoom in that much. But we'll notice we can still see the colliders here on the wheel, the wheel colliders. Let's go ahead and we'll start this up. And now when we turn, you can actually see the colliders turning. And I'm picking up a little bit of forward momentum there, that's fine. But we'll work on the visuals later on actually getting the tires to turn with the colliders. It's not that hard, but I want to keep that set from what we're working on right now. But it's actually pretty cool. If you actually set it up to have all four tires steer your vehicle, you would see all four of these colliders moving around. Or again, if you only wanted to steer at the back wheels, that'd be fine too. It's kind of weird that my car is moving around because I'm not pushing forward or backwards. I wonder if it has something to do with the, the wheels moving around. But anyway, we've got that done. So next up, let's actually start figuring out what these values should be for our colliders. Actually, let's get rid of those magic numbers we have up here. On the motor. So I'm going to come up here, create two public floats. Um, see the ones, the amount of power coming from the engine. So for now, we'll call it engine power until I actually figure out what the real techie name is. And I'm not, I am going to keep the values the same for now that we've been using. 
Uh, we're gonna tweak them in the editor and when we figure out exactly how much we want, I'll come back in here and set it for the default in the script itself. But for now, we'll just keep the values that we're using. So turning power, turning, yeah, we'll just call it turn power. I'm sure there's some fancy torque name for it, but I'll look that up later. For now, I know what it does. And of course, we'll take this engine power and put it there. Turn power, put it there. And great. Let's go ahead. We'll jump back into Unity and let's start playing with these uh, values. Now, I've actually gone ahead and set some of them up. If you notice here, I have mass of 20. Uh, this isn't a metric system. So I'm assuming tires on average weigh, at least your, your default car tires, weigh 20 kilograms. Like, oh, I have no idea. Really, it's going to depend on what type of tires you have. But eh. for me, I'm going to start with 20. Uh, radius, I'm not going to change because you really want that to be around where your, your tire size is. Uh, suspension, I'm going to end up loading up my other game that I made to have my car in and take a look to see what values I had set up for that for my default value because I really liked those ones so I'm going to stick with those but anyway uh, go ahead and change the suspension distance basically how much it can bounce uh, and, and a quick reminder for you while you're playing around with these uh, center we're not going to touch this that just changes where the collider is on your wheel it should be set up fine uh, suspension spring contain, uh, controls how bouncy your tire will be. Your forward friction, basically how much you're going to skid when you're going forward or backwards. Uh, your sideways friction is how much you're going to skid going left and right when you're turning. And I did go ahead and drop these down to 0.75. I'm not sure if we're actually going to get a good chance to see those until we actually work with the whole stabilizing your car so it doesn't tip so easy. But let me go ahead and take a look in my other app, see what the values are, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got ahead and note up a screenshot on the other computer. And I actually had 18 for mass. I'm gonna leave it at 20. My radius is gonna be a five. Which actually I find weird because my radius on the other car was 0.62. So I must have had a really tiny car before. <laughs> Again, it's just probably all a matter of scale. Uh, my suspension distance was 0.8. Um, again, these values are going to differ from car to car as well. Uh, I'm going to leave this here to start off with maybe point, maybe two. So I want a little bit of bounce. All right, so spring I have at 10,000. Dampener I have at 500. Target position, I have at zero. Now keep in mind the target position is um, where you want the car to, you know, your default position to sit. Zero's fully extended as far as the spring goes and one's fully compressed. We want our car sitting at the top. Of course, you could probably uh, have it sit somewhere in the middle if you want. For me, I want it at zero. All right, so let's go ahead and start dealing with the friction. So I've got one, 20,000. 2, 10,000, and 0.75 for both. So that looks like the only thing I changed was there. Now, there was one thing I did change with the car, and that's how much mass we want uh, our car to be. Again, this is in uh, metric system, so kilograms. So, I don't know, how much do you want your car to weigh? I'm going to start off at 1,000 kilograms, and we should apply some drag to it. And I'm going to go ahead and just put, well, I'm just going to leave it zero for now. And again, this is not one of those things where you just set the numbers and you're done. Uh, you're going to be tweaking those constantly until you find that the magic position that you like for your game. Then, of course, as your game goes on, you'll probably be changing them as well. So because of the added weight, my car is not moving anymore. And another thing, too, is we actually forgot to copy this over to the other wheels. So a quick and easy way to do it without having to delete all the prefabs or delete all the, the wheels and re-add them is we're just going to copy them. 
copy the value. And did I not copy the right one? Copy component. Go to the next one. Wheel collider. There we go. Paste component values. And if we go ahead and open it up. There we go. And you can have different values to different wheels if you really want. There we go. We got them all. And let's go. Uh, select my car. And it looks like I'm going to need a lot more engine power. So let me see. Engine power. Let's bring this up to 200. There we go. We're starting to move. And turning again. You want to find those magic numbers to get the car to behave the way you want it to behave. This is obviously too slow, but you get the idea. We could crank this up to 2,000. And that instantly throws them over. Woo! Can I recover? Come on! <laughs> well, anyway, we got our car. We got it fine-tuned. You should understand what all these different settings mean now. So go ahead, sit down, and play around with those little tweaks and adjustments till you get the car going generally the way you want it. Um, let's see. One more thing, actually. I didn't add the require component, did I? I did not. So we're going to go ahead and add that up here as well. And I just to cut down on the risk of typos. And because I'm lazy, we'll just go ahead and we'll post that up here. But we're not going to grab a wheel collider. We're going to grab a rigid body. Make sure you don't grab a rigid body 2D. And we'll leave space there. And uh, that's it. This is where we'll end this one. In the next one, we're going to go ahead and work a little bit on... Oh, helps by. These are backwards. I like it this way. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work a little bit more on the visuals as far as having the tires turn. Uh, maybe at least start setting up for the skid. Nah, actually, in the next one, let's go ahead and start setting the multiplayer functions up. So we can actually create a web player. We won't be able to do a whole hell of a lot. We'll just be able to drive around with each other. But uh, yeah, we'll start there. And then we'll start working on some visuals. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Don't forget to like the video.